Okay, well, we're in the first Sunday of Advent. We've lit the first Advent candle. And we're thinking around this theme, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, and Light in the Darkness as we work through the four Sundays of Advent. And today we are thinking around this theme of the Waymaker. The first Sunday of Advent is traditionally associated with hope. And the great hope we carry in our hearts as God has made a way for us through Jesus the Savior. God has always been making a way for his people. These four themes, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness, they are great titles, they are great names. But the only person in all of history that they could ever be fully applied to is Jesus Christ. And they find their fullest embodiment in him and through him. And right from the beginning of time, before God ever created the universe, he made a way. He knew the end from the beginning. He knew that humanity would rebel and reject him, that the power of sin would enter this world and draw us away from our loving Heavenly Father. And he made a way through his Son, Jesus Christ. We see that foreshadowed in the way that the Father rescued his beloved children Israel from the slavery of Egypt, the way he led them through the wilderness, through the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Our God is always the one who makes a way for his people. Whether it's through the exodus from Egypt or the exile from Babylon, he keeps bringing his people back to himself. And it's in and through our lovely Lord Jesus that we see the fullest return from exodus and exile. Jesus, the one who is the Savior. And the verse we've been looking at from Isaiah 40 and verse 3. I'll come back to those ones in a minute, Mike. You're all right? The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Here is Isaiah talking about the way of the Lord. And it's a phrase we see picked up in the New Testament. We see it in Acts chapter 18 and verse 25, the way of the Lord. And the way of the Lord is in contrast with the ways of this world, the ways of this world which draw us away from the way and the path of the Lord, the ways of this world which are crooked and the ways of this world which are oppressive and unjust. And we all wander at times onto those paths of the ways of the world, whereas we want to be those that stay on the straight and narrow path of the way of the Lord. What does that, interesting, isn't it, that the way of the Lord is a straight path. And I looked up that word straight. It means to put right. It means pleasant. It means prosperous. It means just. And it means righteous. The way of the Lord is all of those things rolled into one. That's rather wonderful, isn't it? And the way of the Lord is revealed to us through a son, the Savior. Isaiah also talks about, in Isaiah chapter 35, let me just check, I think that's what it says, yes, that is what it says, Um, the highway of holiness, he's talking here in chapter 40 about prepare a way for the Lord, make straight his paths, a highway in the wilderness, and it's a highway of holiness, the Holy One Jesus who leads us in the path of of holiness. So we want to know what it is to come close 
and to know intimate fellowship with Jesus, the one through whom these valleys will be made low and the ways of the Lord will come, the crooked places made straight and the rough places smooth. You know, through the power of sin, there are crooked places and rough edges to each and every one of us in and through our Lord Jesus. They are being made straight. They are being made right. They're being something that is pleasant unto the Lord, and they are enabling us to enjoy the prosperity of the Lord. Now, by prosperity, you've heard me say it many times, I don't mean health, wealth, and happiness, though it can include that. What I mean by prosperity, biblical prosperity, is living in God's world, God's way, living successfully for God. And that can be in times of great blessing and success, and that can be in the midst of the deepest suffering. We need a balanced and a biblical view of what we understand by prosperity, because we don't get that from everyone. And there's so much information comes our way these days. Well, if God is making a way and making things straight, what does that look like? And the two verses I want to look at give us an insight into that. The first is again from Isaiah, way back in Isaiah chapter 9, six centuries before the Son and Savior was sent. Isaiah says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Wow. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Prepare the way of the Lord, proclaimed and foreseen by Isaiah in the 6th century, and a rallying cry just before Jesus, oh, in the time of Jesus, through John. John the Baptist, Matthew chapter 3. John takes up that call to prepare the way of the Lord, a voice calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. John is the herald of the coming king and savior, the king and ruler who's going to bring an everlasting kingdom. And of its increase, there will be no end. The kingdom of God is always on the increase. That is the way of the Lord. And of its increase and its what? Of its peace, there will be no end. So the way of the Lord is the way of peace. In and through the Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son and our Savior, God has made peace. He made peace by coming to live amongst us. If you're on a way, you're on a journey, you travel. And God himself took on human flesh. He traveled from heaven to earth. And through the incarnation, which we celebrate in Advent and at Christmas, he came amongst us. He moved into the neighborhood, John tells us. He became man fully to experience everything we experience in these fleshly flesh and bone and blood bodies. And he knows all the temptations and trials and pressures, the, what it is to be human. But the crib led to the cross. And on the cross, through the greatest intercession of all of history, Jesus bled and died to make a way that you and I can be made right with God, that you and I can be reconciled, that we can come back into a right relationship with him, that we can know peace with God. While we were still sinners, Paul tells us, 
while we were lost in trespass and sin, while we were enemies of God, Christ died for us. And Paul also talks about how God made peace through Christ dying upon the cross, if you read through the book of Ephesians. The way of the Lord is the way of peace. And that peace is known through the person of Jesus Christ who bled and died for you and for me, who paid the penalty for our sin and rebellion and rejection against God. Where the ways of the world had drawn us aside and led us in crooked and rough paths, Jesus is here to lead us back on the straight and narrow path of peace and to bring us back into relationship with our Heavenly Father. So the first way is the way of peace. And secondly, I want to look at a verse from Matthew. We know it well. We read it in Advent every year. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. God came amongst us. There is a movement from heaven to earth. God takes up residence in human flesh so that he can save his people from their sins. The way of the Lord is the way of peace, but it is also the way of salvation. That word, he has come to save his people from their sins. We tend to think about it just being about being set free from sin and our rebellion and rejection against God. But the word is a very rich word. It's the word sozo, to save, to rescue, to deliver. It means to be freed from sin. Yes, it means to be delivered from evil, delivered from evil in the past, in the present, and in the future. It means to be healed and to make whole. It means to be set free from the enemy of our souls. And it means a few things more that I can't quite remember them all now, but there are nine uh, roots to the word. It's incredible what Jesus does for us upon the cross. The fullness of that salvation that he brings. The one who brings the way of peace and the way of salvation. And there is no need that any of us cannot experience it because Scripture tells us over and over again that today is the day of salvation. We just need to acknowledge our need of the Savior to turn around and come to God and ask him to forgive us and to come and fill our hearts with his peace and his love and his life. And he will do that. And he can do that for you and he can do that for me today. The crib led to the cross. The cross led to the resurrection and Jesus was ascended to God's right hand. And we're currently awaiting a day. The cross will lead to a coronation. And Jesus will be crowned as the world's true ruler and king. Revelation 15 and verse 11 tells us, when Jesus returns, the great cry that will go out as the trumpet sounds will be the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of the Lord and his Christ. That everlasting reign and rule of peace will be fully established on this earth. What God has begun in Jesus Christ's life and death and resurrection, he is putting people right. He is putting this planet right. And when Jesus returns, he will put all things right. And we will know perfect peace 
and harmony forever and ever. This is the way of the Lord. This is the plan of our God, who is the way maker, who has planned the end from the beginning and has planned it all in and around our wonderful Lord Jesus. Jesus is the King of peace who brings the way of salvation. And I want to just end with a quote I found. God is a way maker. God is a way maker. He always has been. He always will be. Of course, Jesus himself says, I am the what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. We want to know God's way. We come to him who is the way, Jesus. Christianity was called the way. And the people of God have always been encouraged to walk in the ways of the Lord. God is a way maker. Just know that. The God you serve is a way maker. He'll make a way to get it done, fix it, shift it, turn it, even when there doesn't seem to be a way. Get into agreement with God today that you're going to serve him, maintain faith in him, and wait on him because his blessings are always worth the wait and always right on time. God is your way maker. Jesus is your way. And the Holy Spirit is your guide upon the way of the Lord. He is your map. He is your compass. He is your satnav, par excellence, all rolled into one so that you can stay upon the way of the Lord. The scriptures point the way to the way of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit speaks into our lives. This is the way. Walk in it. God has provided so many rich resources to enable us to stay upon his way. In and through this Advent time, as we anticipate and celebrate the coming of our Lord Jesus, the time he came to save us and the time he will come back to put all things right, will we be those that stay close to him? Will we be those that are attentive to Scripture, hearing and heeding the Holy Spirit so we can continue to walk in that way, the way of peace and the way of of salvation. Let us make that choice, that decision to focus on the Lord and his way this day. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you are our way maker. Even where we can see no way, you, can, you are the one that can make a way. You are the God in whom all things are possible. We thank you that no promise of God will ever fail. We thank you that the promises of God are fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, and the one who brings the way of the Lord, the way of peace, the way of salvation. Father, we pray that you do a work in each of our hearts afresh this morning. That we might be a people that is committed to the way of the Lord. Father, we ask that you would consecrate us in your way through the power of your Spirit this day. And Father, as we walk upon your way, as we are those that seek to radiate your love and light and make known your life, that your way might be made known in and through us. That the way that we live for you might lift Jesus high. And as Jesus is lifted high, May he draw all men and women and children unto himself. So, Father, in this Advent season, let us more faithfully walk in your way. 
This we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.